Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Silent Mike with a new video. Today we're taking your questions, like always, from the comments below. What topics you want me to cover? Any questions you have? Fitness, life, nutrition. How can I help you? And also on Instagram, Silent Mike with two Ks. Let's hop into the video. What's your future goals with fitness and powerlifting? And do you offer personal coaching? Um, now, for many of you that follow me and follow me over the years, uh, I started training, I started lifting weights to be a better basketball player. Uh, as soon as I stopped playing in college, uh, I coached a little bit of high school basketball. I planned to get back into basketball and go to college again. Didn't happen. Uh, basically, I dove straight into strength and conditioning, uh, which then turned around into creating content on the internet, sharing my thoughts, my experiences, my ideas on training. Hoping you guys with your goals and along the way, uh, I dove real deep into the powerlifting world, helping at meets, uh, working for companies, social media marketing, et cetera, et cetera, and powerlifting myself. Now, I don't love the sport of powerlifting. It is not for me. It's never been a passion of mine. My passion is to entertain people, hopefully make them smile and help them with their goals. It allows me a way to share my passion for fitness and life with others because a lot of people are really passionate about powerlifting itself and they love to compete. They get very fulfilled from training day in and day out and hitting new PRs on the platform. I do not. Uh, now, um, because of my career path, because of the content, I don't want to be the guy that talks the talk and doesn't walk the walk. So yes, I've competed in powerlifting for the last seven years and I've basically competed once a year, um, if not two or three times a year, but minimum once a year for the last seven years. Um, my last meet was a deadlift only meet June, 2018. Um, but right now I have no plans to compete. Uh, my, my training is for me. Uh, it's a good mental time for me. I'm doing a good amount of cardio. Uh, I'm on like a legs push pull, kind of like a power building routine, uh, which leads to the next question. I don't do one-on-one -on -one coaching. Basically what we have, uh, me, Omar Isof, and Bart Kwan created Kaizen Training. And basically it's the combination of all our methods and experience um, from ourselves, coaching, and the experts that we get to rub elbows with. Uh, all the time uh, over the last 10 years with different interviews, mentors, etc. Uh, and we built our own programs for you guys. And so that's the power building I'm basically running myself. It's a leg push pull. Um, 1.0 on the website is six days a week. 2.0 is five times a week, depending on what you want. Uh, but I'm lifting for me, man. I'm having a lot of fun. Uh, I've had some back issues my entire life, but especially back flare up over the last three years, which kind of held me back in terms of strict strength. Um, so right now I'm squatting, I'm focusing in on that and getting my strength back in the squat uh, and enjoying my time. Um, so I may power lift again. Uh, you know, I still squat, I still bench. I'm not deadlifting currently, but uh, we'll see if we hop into meet in the future. May happen, may not. Uh, I'm not tied, I'm not married to the game. Uh, I just enjoy the gym and I enjoy helping you guys. So I still coach a bunch of people one-on-one, -on -one, but it's mostly friends. How important is mobility to you and do you have a routine when you do it? So mobility to me, I think is a slightly overrated word. Um, there's tons of very smart physical therapists and there's some not so smart ones that made mobility, stretching, um, dynamic warmups and static warmups very popular on the internet, foam rollers, et cetera, et cetera. I think for the majority of people is they just have improper movement patterns um, and some issues with posture of long-term sitting and being sedentary and just not moving around. Often when you move around, uh, you'll do okay. So for mobility for me, um, in my life, my goals, again, powerlifting or, or just feeling good, uh, I, I, you need slightly more range of motion than's required for the movements or life you want, right? So if I wanna bench press and I gotta bring that bar to my chest, I should be able to go just beyond that without my shoulder exploding and that's enough range of motion for the bench press, if that makes sense. So I don't necessarily focus a lot on um, warming up per se or mobility. Uh, I don't spend a lot of time on mobility. I do spend a lot of time warming up. So I often hit the step mill, elliptical, assault bike, or a sled if I have access to it for five to 15 minutes before uh, I, I lift. Uh, I get my blood flowing, I get a nice sweat going. Similar to you would if you were playing basketball, soccer, or football. You're not just going out when the ball tips up and playing. You have a nice sweat going from the uh, layup lines to the shoot arounds, jogging, etc. cetera. Um, I do mobility in terms of actual movements. So I'll do some lunges, sometimes weighted lunges to get blood in my legs, uh, open up my hips from sitting all day or working at the computer. Uh, again, I like kind of standing movements when I'm warming up. Like I said, a sled or step mill are probably my favorite. I do really enjoy the salt bike as it really helps my knees and quads get blood through it, but my hips are still in a seated closed position. I'd like to be standing as it's obviously different and opposite to what I do all day, working at a computer, et cetera, et cetera. But, uh, 
I don't really have a mobility routine. I put some from other athletes and coaches on this channel if you want to search, but I like to just warm up. Some of these questions I can't even uh, begin to comprehend. Love you. Well, thanks. It's not really a question, but I love you guys too. How do you change your mindset for a lifting meet versus a typical lifting set in the gym? Um, and I guess that's referenced into powerlifting um, and competing and competing your best under uh, pressure. And so uh, I actually just recorded a really cool podcast. If you guys don't know, I have a new podcast called 50% Facts. It's on iTunes, Spotify, anywhere you want to go. Just 50% Facts, search it. Um, and we just interviewed a uh, professional sports psychologist working with tons of pro athletes, Olympians, college athletes, and high school athletes. And we kind of talked about that what it means to be in flow, what it means to be in the zone, what it takes to be a gamer, someone that shows up under pressure. Um, and for me, it's very similar. Uh, when I was really uh, focused in on hitting a deadlift PR at a meet or getting stronger in the gym or playing basketball, I was a little bit more passionate about, but I was focused the same with the, both of them. And the, 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 the truth is my mindset's the same. A lot of visualization building up to that weeks or days before, a lot of focus in and out of the gym on that. So um, whether that's my posture out of the gym or getting my sleep or food out of the gym, uh, the focus is to perform correctly when I need to at that deadlift. And then the focus in the moment at the time, not allowing distractions around me, uh, whether it be people, noises, music, lack of music, my belt being too tight, my shirt not fitting, whatever, how I'm looking, how many cameras are on, how many cameras are off. Um, it's really just focusing in on the movement, focusing in at the task at hand. And the more you can focus in and practice that focus during training, um, you can really train your mental uh, fortitude and mental aspect of the game. And so then when you get onto the platform, yeah, there's more distractions, there's uh, judges, there's uh, sometimes a crowd, which maybe you're not uh, used to if you're lifting for, um, by yourself at a commercial gym or whatever gym, but to me, um, it becomes the same. Uh, and so obviously I'm slightly trained already because there's cameras on and I've trained in big gyms and in front of big seminars and I played basketball in front of a lot of people. Um, so some of that's a little bit more natural to me, but if it's not natural to you, um, just really focus in on the task at hand, focus it inward, focus in on what you have to accomplish and try to ignore all that. And uh, you should be good both in practice in the gym and the competition itself. Explain Bulgarian training, West Side training. Um, so those are two different things. Um, I guess let's go back to Bulgarian training. Bulgarian training became very really popular in the mid to late 1900s uh, through the sport of Olympic weightlifting. And so we have to make that distinguishment. Olympic weightlifting is the clean and jerk and the snatch. Um, the Bulgarians did a uh, kind of new age or had a new type of approach to the sport, um, which was highly specific. High, high intensity, high frequency. And so basically what they would do in those movements and often an A accessory movement, front squat, back squat, etc. which for that sport, a back squat, front squat are accessories because you don't compete in them. Um, but the specificity of the lift, the clean and jerk, etc. cetera, um, they would max out. They would work out to a, a you know, 90, above 95% or above 92 and a half, above 90-ish, I guess you could ask the coach. Um, and people have adapted this different ways, but they would work to a max every single day, um, often multiple times a day and in different movements. So maybe they would do a snatch, uh, warm up, clean up in the morning uh, or, or, or technique work and then they would max out in the afternoon, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but what we have to understand is people have tried to translate this to other sports or translate this specifically to powerlifting, the squat, bench, and deadlift, where those lifts are called the power lifts and they are the power lifts because they're the lifts you can typically the majority of humans can lift the most amount of weight in. Um, hence, in ratio, Olympic lifting is sub-maximal. If you can snatch 100 kilos, you could probably deadlift 150 kilos. Now that's just a random example, but no one snatches more than they can deadlift. That's just not possible. Um, and so for you to max out the overall stimulus on your body uh, is much less in those movements. They're also uh, concentric only. There's no eccentric in the clean and jerk or the snatch, um, which you know is more fatiguing overall, especially if you have to do both, uh, the eccentric and concentric, like a squat or a bench. Um, but what people have done, if they try to adapt that to 
again, the powerlifting, and they would add drop sets or exercise variations, etc., etc. Now, this can work and it can be effective because, again, the high specificity, if you're trying to get stronger at a one rep max, what's better than practicing the one rep max, practicing a heavy load? Um, but if you try to do it in the squat, bench, and deadlift, I think it's going to be with high frequency daily or multiple multiple times a week i think it's going to be very difficult for most people to recover and actually make progress from where um, yes the specificity of it getting better at lifting heavy plus the neural adaptations of the strength of handling over 90 percent are big factors in getting strong what will also help you get strong is overall volume sets times reps times load so there's also something to be said of squatting high frequency you know two to four maybe even five times a week uh, but focusing in on that volume and that technique you know one day handling 60 70 percent one day handling 70 to 80 and then maybe another day or on before those handling around 90 or 85 to 90 percent um, but making them clean making them more like an rpe eight or nine still with good technique um, but not actually maxing out every single day and again handling that volume will allow you to build muscle and build strength in the long term Now I've never heard of anyone in the powerlifting game whose squat bench deadlift maxes daily Bulgarian style for more than a year and no one does it uh, because it's just not applicable So when we're looking at our training when we're looking at our longevity whether your goal is to be a world record holder or just get stronger over time We need to understand how to do that big picture You'll see some massive gains if you just start squatting every day for a month for sure, because you're adapting quick to a new stimulus, and again, it's highly specific. But can you do that for the next five years? If you're squatting 400 now, that might not lead you to the 650 uh, d uh, squat that you want to do in two years from now, three years from now. So um, focusing on staying injury-free technique and volume long-term with smart approach, smart programming and progression will probably be uh, a better situation for you i hope you guys appreciate the videos i appreciate you guys for watching give this thing a thumbs up comment below follow me on instagram let me know what you want me to cover in upcoming videos hopefully i'll see you guys on twitch again sunday through thursday and check out the new podcast 50 percent facts on itunes i appreciate you guys salam i'm out of here